I have spent a significant portion of the last three or four years telling people not to use the old D3D compatibility scripts in GameMaker. And there's a few reasons for that. First and foremost, they're very slow. If you try using them, it doesn't take very long at all before you hit a performance bottleneck. They're very bare bones, and they don't give you a lot of control over what's actually drawn. These functions trace their lineage all the way back to something like GameMaker 6, which I don't think I have to remind anybody was a time when indie game development was still in its infancy, and when GameMaker's technical capabilities were far less impressive than what they are now. But time marches on, and as wonderful as things like vertex buffers in GameMaker are, the fact remains that it was honestly really nice being able to have an immediate mode set of 3D primitives that you could draw in just a single line of code. So to fill that niche, I have gone and created my own implementation of all of the D3D primitive shapes. And because I thought it would be funny to just make the search results for this an utter nightmare, I too have chosen to name my library extension whatever D3D. But in this case, it stands for Drago 3D and not Direct 3D. So if you want to get your hands on this for yourself, I will have a link to the itch.io page down in the video description. Uh, as always, I wrote a bunch of text about it, and you can scroll down to the bottom to download the file. I wasn't kidding about performance, by the way. If you were to draw using GameMaker's D3D compatibility scripts uh, 256 spheres with a precision of 12, uh, you would be looking at performance that is something like this. Uh, we are getting 14 to 15 frames per second, which is not ideal. Um, this isn't, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of uh, objects being drawn on screen. Whereas with my drop and replacement, if we were to draw the same thing, 256 spheres with a precision of 12, uh, we would be looking at much, much higher frame rates than that indeed. We're not quite looking at a GPU bound here, but, well, when I said the old D3D compatibility functions were slow, I really meant that they were slow. So stepping over to GameMaker, this is largely meant as a drop-in replacement for the old D3D compatibility scripts. Uh, if you have dragger3d.yymps, you can go and import that asset package into GameMaker, and you can um, you can grab the whole thing, you can import the changelog if you want. Uh, changelog isn't the, the most important, but um, I do not want to import that twice, thank you. My demo scene uh, that I'm going to run this in is going to be a, a cut-down version of the, uh, the 3D tutorial uh, demo scene that I've been using for the past several years. Uh, we have essentially an empty plane, and we're going to draw some 3D primitives on that. If you have used the old uh, GameMaker D3D functions in the past, you know exactly how this is going to work. Um, if I wanted to draw, for example, a block, I can simply say D3D draw block. Let's, uh, let's give it some coordinates. Uh, pretty much all of these shapes are going to take a start and an end uh, set of 3D coordinates, so if I want a block to be at like... Um, say 50, 50, and 0, and we're going to have it go 75, 75, and 25, so it's going to be blocked with a side length of 25. It's going to take a texture, uh, which you can get with uh, a function including, but not limited to, sprite get texture. Uh, we can use that nice um, image map of the planet Earth um, for this demo. You can have the texture repeat. Uh, one of the, uh, the many shortcomings of the old GameMaker D3D functions is that it doesn't give you a whole lot of control over how the textures repeat. You can say one, uh, the default probably might as well just be one, and that will have the, uh, the texture just um, mapped uh, evenly to each side of the cube, like this. If you want the texture to repeat on the cube on each of the six faces, you could set the texture repetition to two and two, horizontally and vertically, and we will have the, uh, the textures doubled. And uh, we also have D3D uh, draw a bunch of other shapes. So we have blocks, we have cones, uh, we have cylinders. I don't know if it's worth enumerating them here, but we have blocks, cones, cylinders, ellipsoids, which are spheres that don't necessarily have to be of a uniform radius. And we also have walls and floors, which are probably honestly the least interesting of the 3D primitives that you could draw with the old D3D functions, but... They're there, and I've implemented them for you to do whatever you want with. Um, the other arguments that you can find in some of the other shapes, such as um, whether or not a cylinder should be closed or open, and the, uh, the number of steps in the, uh, the curve, those all map exactly onto the, uh, the old D3D function, so you could have an open cylinder or a closed cylinder with or without the end caps. And I guess I'll demonstrate that. Uh, the steps argument is going to relate to the precision that the... Um, that the curved surfaces are drawn with. Uh, let's say uh, I'll make the cylinder open for now. Uh, generally a value of 20-ish, maybe 32 is fine. 
Uh, this should be an approximately smooth surface. Uh, I am missing a uh, punctuation. Uh, this should be. This should look like an approximately smooth surface with um, with flat shading. It's a little bit more obnoxious, but you can see we have the cylinder here. Uh, it does not have a top. It does not have a bottom. Uh, it's got the earth texture repeating on it. Uh, you can bump that up if you want. Uh, this will increase the uh, the polygonal density of the shape, and it'll make the uh, the uh, flat lighting a little bit a little bit more fine grained. Um, if you have smooth lighting, if you're interpolating the lighting over over uh, polygons, then this will look much smoother. Um, I feel like the uh, the texture repetition of of two is a little much. Uh, I will also mention that um, the original game maker uh, draw a cylinder and draw a cone uh, D three D uh, compatibility scripts. They had what I think I'm going to uh, go out on a limb and call a bug in them. In the in Game Maker's uh, D3D compatibility functions for these uh, for cones and cylinders, the texture mapping on the ends would be a little bit messed up. And by messed up, I uh, I forget exactly where the UVs are mapped to on these. I want to say it's just like the top and bottom scan lines of the uh, of the texture image, which isn't great. Looks very glitchy. Uh, not a fan. Uh, nevertheless, I am going to uh, go out on a limb and say I fixed that in uh, in my reimplementation and. Um, Again, these 3D primitives don't give you a ton of control over how the, uh, the textures are mapped overall, but at the very least, um, in the way I've done it, they're mapped to something, and uh, we don't have that weird, annoying, glitchy effect. So a few, uh, a few notes about this. Uh, these should all uh, properly respect any and all uh, matrix transforms that were set before, um, before drawing your shape. So if you wanted to, like, matrix... Uh, set matrix world and uh, let's just have this like rotate about the origin or something like that so the translation can be zero um, rotation can be let's say that and scale can be one and we'll reset the transform when we are finished uh, this should um, this should cause our d3d cylinder to rotate about the origin about the world origin and um, all right, there, there it goes. It's uh, it's rotating about the world origin. If you wanted to do no, if you wanted to do more complex transforms uh, with these shapes, you could. I'm going to get rid of that for now. You know, it might be fun actually. Is uh, if I were to draw a globe like this and uh, and have it rotate on the spot, that might be a fun, fun little demo that we can do. Okay, hooray, we've got a, uh, we've got a globe. The texture's backwards. Let's, uh, let's negate that H repeat there. And I think it's also, uh, rotating, uh, backwards. I think it's rotating, like, the opposite way that it... Yeah, uh, in real life, the Earth, uh, the Earth rotates the other way. Okay, I'm getting off topic. So, we've got a globe, and, um, that's fun. So because I can't leave well enough alone, I um, I did actually make some enhancements to these um, to these D3D functions. So in the original versions, if you were to do something like draw set color, and let's select a color, uh, let's say C underscore like, I don't know, maroon or something like that. Let's uh, set that back to white when we're done and draw set alpha for good measure. Let's make that something like half. Um, if you had some kind of draw color or alpha set, uh, when you would have called a uh, a D3D primitive function, then that would not have been applied to the vertex color and alpha of uh, of whatever you drew. And I have uh, I have set it up so that if you did want to set the uh, color or alpha of a uh, like the current game maker draw settings, uh, that would be um, that would be respected by whatever the vertex buffer that you tried to draw was. Uh, this is a uh, a 50% transparent bit of maroon. I'm going to set that back to no transparency because it's easier to see that way. Um, this should give us a... There we go, a maroon sphere. It looked funnier than I thought it was going to when it was transparent. Uh, you can also, if you don't feel like setting the draw color, uh, draw set color, whatever, I've added some optional parameters to the draw shape, to the draw primitive function, so you could say... Let's pick a different color this time. Let's say, like... Uh, 
I'm not like the biggest fan of a lot of game makers uh built-in colors. So let's select uh, C underscore teal. There's uh, there's only 17 color constants the game maker provides, and like a lot of them don't look great. They're like the default web colors from like 1992 or something like that. Anyway, so we've we've got ourselves a teal sphere. You can set the optional blending color um, as an argument to this. Uh, just in case this wasn't fast enough, I've also added uh, what I have called simple versions of all these uh, of all these 3D primitive shapes. And uh, the way that um, the way that this system works is it will cache uh, vertex buffers that it draws. If you later try to draw another ellipsoid or block or whatever with uh, similar enough properties to one that you've drawn previously, instead of recreating it from scratch, which is what the compatibility scripts do, uh, it will just um, it'll recycle it. And there's a not much, but a small amount of overhead to that caching process. And if you uh, if you didn't care when you were drawing an ellipsoid, for example, about certain things such as the uh, texture repetition or the color, then we can pretty safely strip that out of the equation and we can um, skip the caching step. And then you'll get a not enormous, but a, uh, a modest performance boost. So if I were to, uh, let me say, if I were to go over to my, my comparison example, and if I were to draw, um, Let's bump this up a little. Let's say we're going to draw 20 uh, by 20, so uh, 400 of these spheres. Then we should uh, we should see pretty much what we saw before. I think that was like 300, 400 FPS real. All right, about a uh, 200 for um, for this many of them. But if we were to instead draw the D3D draw ellipsoid simple um, version of the sphere, uh, which we would uh, we would have to take out the uh, the precision and the texture repetition arguments because those are the uh, the identifying features of a sphere. Uh, we would have spheres, but our uh, our FPS real would have gone up to what's that 400 500, which is a uh, significant improvement. So if you don't need any fancy texture repetition or vertex color or uh, if the default uh, I think the default number of steps for each of these is like uh, 32. If that's all fine enough, uh, you can use the uh, the simpler version of the D3D draw shapes for, uh, again, a decent performance boost. Uh, lastly, uh, when it comes to spheres in particular, uh, sometimes it can be kind of a pain saying D3D draw ellipsoid if you want a sphere and having to specify the start and the end when really all you really want to do is specify a um, an XYZ center and a radius. So for that, uh, I've also implemented D3D draw sphere. Uh, as well as D3D draw sphere simple. So this will allow us to uh, to just draw a sphere with an XYZ, a radius, and a texture if you want it. And uh, this isn't really a performance boost of any sort. It should be giving us about what we had before, but um, those are slightly larger. I think before the diameter was 25, not the radius, but anyway. Uh, that can be a somewhat nicer line of code to write if all you want is a sphere than uh, than the ellipsoid version of the function. All of these primitive shapes will work with the default game maker shaders, by the way. And if you do have your own 3D lighting going on, then the vertex normals are set to the, the appropriate values, so it should work with that too. So uh, that's Dragger 3D. I might implement other shapes in this in the future. Uh, Tori, so donut shapes are um, sometimes. A, uh, a decently useful primitive shape to draw. I haven't implemented any of the D3D model functions, but uh, that's another thing I'm considering doing for just a, a wrapper for uh, vertex buffer building in case you want to quickly add a triangle or a, uh, a block or something to a vertex buffer. I'm not sure yet. I'll see what people end up using this for. That said, uh, the question of should you actually use this in a production game, I would still say no. While they're not as heinously slow as the old D3D compatibility scripts, uh, my system still does have a number of limitations, particularly when it comes to texture mapping. And there's just so many more things that you can do with vertex buffers and shaders and whatever that, uh, that you can't really do here. And this is great if you want to gray box out a level, if you want to just see where the level geometry is going to go before the final art is in. But if you're really invested in that PS1 aesthetic, then 
I guess I can't stop you. So I'm going to end things off here. If you're still using D3D for whatever reason, I hope this can at least ease the transition into more modern rendering techniques. If you're not using D3D, but you do have a need for some immediate mode uh, 3D primitive drawing, then you might get some use out of this too. Uh, again, for things like blocking out levels or temporary art, that kind of thing. Anyway, my name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. All of the links can be found down in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places as well. If you are interested in learning more about vertex buffers and matrices and shaders and all those weird things, I have dozens and dozens of videos on my YouTube channel about all sorts of crazy 3D things you can do in Game Maker, so feel free to subscribe. I hope you all find this useful, and I will see you all later. Okay, one more thing I meant to check, and remembered as soon as I stopped the recording and forgot, is how does this compare in the Yoyo compiler? I would think the D3D compatibility functions would perform a little bit better in the YYC because it's it's just so much math. My version will get a boost too, but probably not quite as much. All right, so we're uh, we've gone up from like 17 FPS underscore real to about 50, 50 touching 60 in um, D3D compatibility mode. And if I were to uh, If I were to build my version with the YYC, uh, how would this go? So we were getting, what, 200-ish FPS underscore real the, uh, the first time uh, with, the regular, with the regular ellipsoids, I think. And I'm hoping that we, we get up to maybe three, 300. Okay. All right, fun stuff. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.